Hi and welcome to a new video. In this video I just want to do a quick overview of the new firmware that is available. Um, it's available for multiple Asus routers. Um, so in my case I'm, I was just checking the uh, GTAXE 16000 but also it goes across to the uh, GTAX 11000 and if you check as well it'll probably be the AXE 11000 as well and there's other probably uh, multiple Asus routers out there because they, they roll it out in stages so these will come first and then you'll probably get them uh, next as well so as you can see here I just had a quick look to see um, for the uh, GTAX 11000 so you can see here on the uh, 7th of December um, they've just released the uh, same kind of um, firmware update so this covers basically the same update that's for the um, the newest uh, GTAXE 16000 so it's good to see that even though you can see this uh, uh, router has been out for uh, quite a long time you can see all the updates that it's been constantly getting and it goes all the way back to 2020 so you can see that all, over the years and everything else that you know they're constantly updating and giving you security fixes um, so that's really good to see now like I said before this is the reason why I stick with Asus routers is they constantly update and give you the security updates and even add features to these as well so you get near enough the same features that you do in the newer routers um, by software so they add Wireshark or VPN um, <coughs> AI protection and lots of other things as well so they're always constantly giving you the updates and that's really good to see and don't forget there's also the uh, third party Merlin um, WRT uh, firmware as well and if, if you look at my other videos in the playlist you'll be able to see more information on that as well so um, if we go to the ET12 uh, so that's the uh, Zen Wi-Fi mesh uh, routers you can see here it doesn't have uh, an update yet but as I said they normally roll these out updates out over time so um, you'll probably just keep an eye out for it and just keep checking uh, for the actual um, kind of notification you'll get or just manually go into the router settings and just check for new firmware so how you do that is just to remind you um, as you've seen in other videos you'll, you'll need to go into so in this case is I'm going into the browser um, and actually typing in the um, IP address of my uh, router so mine was 192.168.50.1 so that's the standard kind of IP address that you'll get and then you, of course you log in you'll go down to under advanced settings you'll go down to administration option and then uh, if you have a look here you go to firmware upgrade then you just click on this button here so you click on check and you'll just let it actually connect to the internet to the ASUS uh, servers and check to see if there's firmware so if there is new firmware um, it'll come up with this firmware upgrade so it'll tell you what your your current version is is here and then you've got your latest version so it just tells you there's a new version available again you can go to the Asus website if you prefer to so instead of having it download automatically you can go to the Asus support uh, website and download it manually here to this will be to your actual uh, computer so your PC your Mac your tablet or your phone um, and then you upload it by using the upload button here you just click on that select the file that you downloaded and then you'll um, upload the um, the firmware update but again this is much easier to do um, where you can literally um, just click the firmware upgrade button again as I said in previous videos you do have this auto firmware upgrade so if you switch this on that means that if you toggle that on basically it will automatically as soon as a new version comes out it will apply that update and then install it automatically uh, I, as I said before um, if you are a person that just wants to plug it in and forget about it user then please do switch that on so it's always updated um, I, I personally have it off uh, just so of course to make these videos but also um, I like to see you know before it updates what is actually the, um, the latest version and, and what's changing and things like that before I apply the update but again as I said if you just want simple buy the Asus router plug it in and forget it then make sure that is uh, toggled on you'll see also there's a, a check mark here so you can um, 
actually download uh, beta firmware so that's basically like a test version again if you've got a spare router and you want to download it and that's fine but I would never recommend this if this is your main router at home because uh, the this test software is always going to have bugs in and it's not going to be like public release ready so it's, it's going to have some problems and issues so you don't want that when you're halfway through your Netflix series or your gaming and things like that so it's probably to leave that switched off um, if you don't um, have a spare router and you just want to install it on there just to see what the new features are like you can also as I said in previous videos the latest version so if we just click on here where it's got the underline it'll actually bring up the release note so this is basically what they've added so it could be bug fixes it could be security patches or any even new features they're always adding as well so I quickly go through this so you can, you can see here the firmware version so it just tells you exactly what the firmware version is here so under new features, so this one does release, um, this release does have a new feature. So all of this is adding is IPTV profiles. So you'll find these are normally um, under the advanced settings. And basically what these are for is like, again, if you've got IPTV services. So it's, as it says here, it's including now uh, Cellcom, Cellcom TM, uh, Unify Business plus uh, Voice over IP. So it's adding some new companies in there now to it. So it's good again, they're adding um, and uh, basically building on everything. So you can see bug fixes and enhancements. So they've fixed the WAN connection issue. So the WAN is your internet connection. So if you've been having issues or disconnects or drops and things like that, um, any issues there, then they've, uh, they've tried to fix as many as they can on here. So hopefully that will resolve any issues that you may have been uh, having. I personally haven't had any um so uh, i've been quite lucky it also the resolved an issue that's caused by the host name errors um so this is the dynamic dns service so this is where it turns your home ip address so your 186.35.55.3 into um router uh, dot um, asus uh, dot com or dot org um, so basically what it turns it into an easy to remember uh, web address so just saying here with the host name errors it's uh, basically fixed an issue there there also also resolved an open vpn server uh, mode issue so this is basically a tap so that is a type of the uh, server for open vpn so that as we've been in previous videos you'll see that under vpn here a VPN option under here under general uh, and also within the app you'll see that you can uh, switch on different servers and one of them is an open VPN um, so basically this is if you switch on tap mode then uh, there was an issue with their disconnects and things like that or even connecting so they've uh, resolved that as well they've added the uh, MTU setting for uh, WireGuard so again WireGuard is another version of a VPN server so you have open VPN, you have some of the older ones that are PPTP and uh, and then uh, some other ones is IP uh, set uh, that are uh, VPN servers as well. So you've got all the different versions of it. So open VPN and WireGuard are basically uh, VPN server options that you have so you can download whichever which one that you feel more comfortable again again WireGuard is a newer one and also people prefer it because it seems to be quite popular and much quicker and things like that for connection uh, back to your home network and then using it as a VPN when you're uh, out so it's good to see that they're constantly uh, updating that again they've uh, ensured uh, consistency so again around the client status on the WireGuard server so again they're just saying around there on the screen when you connect uh, by WireGuard it normally has a log and it will show you who's connected and how long they're connected so it's just updating that to make sure that the status information is correct and they've enhanced the system stability so again this is around WireGuard server uh, with the DMZ enabled so DMZ is basically if you put one of your devices under a DMZ um, basically that means it's open to the internet it doesn't it's not protected by the AI protection or the firewall in the router or anything like that 
Um, so again, use that very, very carefully. And I've never really advised to put anything under the DMZ. But if you have, and you will have using WireGuard, and that was causing you an issue, then they've fixed that as well. They've improved the stability again um, when enabling or disabling the WireGuard server. So sometimes if you were using it and you were actually switching it off, uh, you, you know, you weren't going to use it and then you're switching it back on again. Um, sometime it wouldn't allow you to switch it back on or enable it after disabling it. So they fixed that issue as well. You've got an optimized memory utilization and fix an occasional server error. Uh, so this again is around the dynamic DNS as we mentioned up here around the host names um, within the app. So this is talking around the uh, Asus uh, app for your Android phone or your iOS phone or tablet. Um, so they fixed the issue there around the memory. So that's good as well. Um, they've corrected a bug. So a bug is basically a, an issue um, that causes you a, a problem when you're doing something on with the router. So they've Corrected a bug encountered when adding a rule to the network service filter. So again, if you've added a filter to any of the services to switch something off or block it or things things like that, then uh, sometimes it wouldn't work properly or it'll just cause you an issue with connecting. So they've fixed that as well. Um, then also um, they've got the fixed connection in the load balancing mode. So again, this is for your WAN. So again, this is we're talking about WAN is your uh, internet uh, connection so basically load balancing mode is when you've got two uh, WAN connections um, connect, if you're lucky enough to have two internet connections coming into your home or business or anything like that and you're using your router in uh, load balancing uh, they are fixed that where you've been using a static IP address so that means your IP address like most homes it always changes when you update your um, your home router or you restart it uh, you get a new IP address normally so um, some people are lucky enough to have the static IP um, so that's around that issue there again uh, secondly uh, to last they've uh, resolved the USB path display issue so and that's in repeater mode um, so basically on the uh, USB path is when you're plugging in of course the uh, USB um, into the back of your uh, router um, using either the USB 2 or USB 3 ports and things like that and lastly, they've improved the VPN client uh, internet uh, accessibility uh, with AI protection. So that AI protection, as we said before, is this one up here. So where you can actually switch it on. So it gives you extra protection um, around for your home network and everything else. So again, I always advise to switch this on. I've never ever in all the years um, seen it actually cause a huge amount of um, delay or anything else that has uh, slowed down the internet connection by having this switched on. Sometimes it might cause you an issue um, that you know with some dev devices but I, I haven't had any issues for a very long time to be honest uh, around using AI protection. So then we just quickly move on to the security fixes so they've fixed an open SSL vulnerability um around the there so open ssl quickly is around is an open source that means any company can use it for free uh, basically it's a command tool that is used to generate private keys uh, and install uh, ssl certificates or tls um, certificates and they basically identify um, information on the router so that's why you get the uh, https and things like that so you can securely um, log into your router and everything else without any errors so that's what it's using is uh, uh, to generate those codes then you've got the uh, drop bear so basically uh, drop bear as you can see here they've updated the latest version so uh, you might not know what drop bear is so drop bear is basically a ssh uh, server and client so basically it's a, just another way that you can normally under your um, network so under administration things like that you can enable access to the router via uh, ssh not many people really use it and again you do need to use it when you're in um, you're using the third party merlin uh, software or the firmware sorry um, so basically it uses that so again it's good that they're, they're up Dating and the uh, actual sort of little kind of programs they've got in there because you've got to remember this thing's got so many features and it relies on lots of different software so it's good that they're constantly up to, keeping these uh, little kind of programs that could cause a security issue keeping them up to date and everything else 
And lastly, we've got the uh, one we normally always see as a, as, a, as a bug fix kind of thing is the uh, stack overflow vulnerability. As I've said in previous videos, I won't bore you again with it, but basically it's just buffers of memory storage that are temporary uh, hold data while being transferred from one location to another. Uh, and basically a buffer overflow occurs when the volume of data exceeds the storage capacity of that memory buffer. So basically overflows it and kind of breaks it and then basically um, that can overwhelm it and then it can execute uh, extra code and that's how then they get attackers um, can actually start um, you know putting extra code in there and be malicious and things like that um, and replacing code and things like that so it's good to see that they're, they're constantly updating um, uh, the, the actual firmware as well so that's been us just all the updates and again as we said um, just keep an eye out if your uh, routers um, it hasn't come up yet with an update um, so normally they roll these out uh, this uh, update and then as we said once you have done that all you have to do is go to firmware upgrade um, and once you click that firmware upgrade button, you'll basically start to download the new uh, firmware or download it and automatically restart. Do give it a, up to 10 minutes. You might say I only need a few minutes, but give it 10 minutes because this is firmware. Make sure it's uh, powered on and you're, do, and you're not doing anything heavy work on there because it will restart and everything else. Just give it time because the firmware, you can cause issues if you suddenly unplug it when it's updating the firmware and brick the whole kind of router. So just give it time. So even if you just give it 15 minutes, I would say, you know, it wouldn't, won't take that long, but just give it that time for it to restart and do everything it wants. Okay, so thanks for watching this video and as usual, I hope you found it uh, useful. And if you have any uh, comments or questions, then please leave them in the comment section. I'll do my best to get back to you. Thanks for watching and have a great day.